Third time? <laughs> Good morning, Yellow Lane. I don't know what's going on my phone today, but I'm not going to pass 30 minutes, okay? Um, good morning, Yahweh, Yeshua, and Elohim. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, God. <laughs> El Elyon. Good morning. You're an awesome God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So... This is my third attempt this morning <laughs> to make this video because I passed 33 minutes and it loses its little mind. It's cutting the video in half and I don't understand why because it never did that before. Whatever, I'm just not going to pass 30 minutes. done this three times now so I'm like thinking about how I'm going to go about this <laughs> technical difficulties but God is good no matter what God is good first of all good morning I hope you're having a good morning I hope you're blessed you should be God loves you <laughs> um I'm going to use this instead of my computer this morning because I turned my computer off and I don't feel like turning it back on. But um, the first verse we're going to talk about today is in... You know what? Let's do the meaning of life. 1 John 1.12. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. John 3.16. John 3.16 says, Forever, For God so loved the world that whoever believes... Uh, for God so loved the world. For, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son <laughs> that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. For the greatest of these, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love, that's where it lists off, if I do these things without love, without love, without love, then it's meaningless. And then we go to 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Um, for anyone who says that they love God, but hates their brother, neighbor, neighbor, brother, does not know God, for God is love. So the meaning of life is agape, which is love. We can't explain that word. But the meaning, the reason we exist is because God loves us. The reason you exist is because God loves you. And to the unbeliever, that's counted as foolishness. But to the believer, that's counted as redemption. A verse I'm going to change up a little bit. The verse usually says, and it's in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9, I believe. It says, for it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. I could be wrong on the address. It could be 10.9 or 9.10. I know it's in Hebrews in one of those two chapters. But it says, a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Now it's talking about an unbeliever. But for the believer, it is yesterday I said it was beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Today I say it's a joyful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. For what once was what blah, 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 for what was once my judgment has now re become my redemption through Christ Jesus. For Jesus defeated the hell. He defeated death. He defeated the grave. He defeated the enemies that have disobeyed and become the accusers. He defeated Satan, the accuser. But 
and God truly loved the world. We're going to go to verse Romans chapter uh, 12, verse 1 and 2. That's, that's where I've been sitting for these last three videos is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Because I want to talk about the changing of the mind. There's Romans seven. So if you if you turn with me, oh yeah, I need to make this real quick. Um, if you've not subscribed to my video, please kindly subscribe and like my videos. Um, and join me on this journey of just studying the Word of God together every morning. I'm trying to keep this consistent, but knowing me, I, I I've been on YouTube longer than Google's been YouTube. So if you have not, uh. uh subscribed or or liked my video or even click the join button or whatever you want to do greatly appreciated um i would i would say clearly to you hey why not join me on this adventure because we're learning god and we're learning who jesus is in god and we're learning the mindset of christ the holy spirit that dwells within us and I'd really like for you to subscribe and follow me. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's a real quick break. <laughs> okay, back to the verses. Verse 1, chapter 12 of Romans. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We're going to stop right there. 12.1. How can I, who am in love with God and love with Christ, how could I not want to do or be with God? I now have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. I now have the power, the love, and the sound mind of God. And now I have this joy, this peace. That surpasses all understanding. How could how could I not want to do the perfect acceptable will of God? And then then we go to the next verse. It says, "And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God." It baffles me because I see people all the time. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And oh, happy go lucky. I'm a Christian. But how do you not want to prove the perfect mercy and grace and love of God that's in your life to yourself? It says salvation is worked out in fear and trembling. But I think on the other token, to understand the perfect will, the joy of God is another issue. He, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, let us move on to perfection and maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance of sin of dead works. How, ca how can I, who am enlightened in Christ, which is verse 4, how can I, who am enlightened in Christ, fall back? How can I crucify Christ again, anew? I have no sin in my life, but yet I have sin. And everybody's going to say, oh, what about 1 John 1, 9, where any man who says he has no sin is a liar. That's true. Any man who says he has no sin is a liar. I have problems. I have issues. I am a human being. I have problems. I have issues. But I am moving on to perfection. I'm moving on to maturity. And I'm proving to myself that God is merciful and kind and loving towards me. I'm proving God's perfect will to myself in my own life. And when I do that, I am focused on the will of God. I'm focused on his word. I'm focused on the scriptures. And I'm learning the word of God. Because I, I am I am enjoying the gospel of Jesus Christ, not, not as though... 
I, I, I'm enjoying it just because I'm saved, just because I'm rescued from hell, but so that I can know how to think. I can know how to walk. I can know how to talk. I can know how to breathe. Before Christ, before salvation, I had no idea what walking, talking, breathing is really, how to think really. But when I came to Christ, I was given a new mind, a new life, a new reality, a new existence. And in this new existence, I was given a new life. For once where I was dead in my sins and my transgressions, now I am alive in Christ. And in alive in Christ, I have a new mindset. I have a new wanting. And the enemy says to me over and over again, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to this, da, 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 da. And, and over and over again, you hear from the enemy all the loudest possible things he can say to you. The world says loud things to you. I want you to hear this now, though. The world is loud. The world, the world and hell and sin and the unbeliever is loud because they're scared. But they will never be as loud as the whisper of God. And what's God saying to you? God's saying to us, the believer, the ones who accept Jesus Christ, and even the unbeliever, but they don't listen. He's saying to every human being on the planet, I love you. I cherish you. I, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, am proud of you. I believe in you. I hope for you. I endure you. For you. And the same breath when Jesus was saying, I give you peace that surpasses all understanding, he also was teaching about being an overcomer. And he said nine different times in the scriptures, be an overcomer. He says, I have overcome the world, therefore you should overcome the world. Jesus God says to you, I have joy for you, I have peace for you, I have power for you, that you overcome, not so that you can be glorified, but so that I and my Father, I in my Father, can be glorified. Where once I, I was scared of sin, I was scared of death, I was scared of hell, which is a good fear to have. But now, as a born-again believer, I no longer have that fear because Christ defeated it for me. And in this new mind of Christ, I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, that I am able to overcome the world. That Paul later on says, be bold. Go boldly before the throne of God. So I go from this terrified little kid to this now I'm standing boldly before my father. And now I'm standing boldly before my daddy. And I'm going to God saying, God, I need you. And God isn't sitting there ignoring me. God's sitting there saying, I love you. I cherish you. I believe in you. I hope for you. I endure for you. I only have good thoughts for you. God only has good thoughts for us. God only, only thinks good things for us. We need to prove that to ourselves. We need to start trusting on the fact that God loves us. Because our enemy, the devil, is yelling at us all the time. You're not a believer. You're not going to heaven. Jesus doesn't love you. It's not real. This isn't real. This isn't real. All the time they're trying to say, oh, the matrix is real. The matrix is real. No, my enemy is real. Who is not my enemy, but the enemy of God. And he has become a target to me because he has looked at me. You want to believe their lies. You want to believe their darkness. You want to believe their junk and believe their junk. But I, for me and my household, as Joshua says, I will serve the Lord. I, I will bow my knee to Christ. And not some activist retarded group. As for me and my household, I will serve the Lord. Because my God says he loves me. My God says he cherishes me. My God says he's proud of me. 
My God says I have only good thoughts for you. My God says he gives me power. He gives me love. He gives me peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives me joy. He heals me where I was once wounded. He, he saves me where I cannot save myself. And once I become enlightened in that joy of Jesus Christ, once I become enlightened of the salvation that is in my life, not because of my doing, but because of Christ, I am now a new creature. I am now a new mindset. I am now a new being who stands in Christ Jesus. Having done all to stand, therefore I will stand. I don't even have to fight the battles. Jesus, God, is going to do it for me. All I have to do is say my prayers and trust in God. And all my battles are going to be won. And no longer am I afraid of death and hell. For Jesus defeated death and hell. And my enemies may be loud and they may be obnoxious and they may be ignorant. But I trust in the voice of God. Because they can never be louder than the whisper of Christ. And he says, I love you. It's a joyful thing for a believer to fall into the hands of a living God. The living God. For he is truly my higher power. He is truly my highest power. The El Elyon. And when I trust in him, I have no reason to doubt his, his faithfulness. I have no reason to doubt his good work, his love, his joy, his peace. And now I need to prove that to myself. You need to prove that to yourself. You need to say to yourself, God loves me. You need to say to yourself, Jesus is my savior. You need to walk in that power, walk in that love. God loves me. God cherishes me. God's proud of me. God believes in me. I might not believe in myself, but God believes in me. I might not have hope for tomorrow, but God has hope for me. There, there, there is no falter with Christ. And though there's suffering in the evening, joy comes in the morning. For now, this mindset I have in Christ is a new mindset. It teaches me to know love because God is loving the unlovable, which I think is me. And when I know that God loves the unlovable, who I think is me, then more so I am able to love those who think they are unlovable because I've been right there where they are. I am right there where they are. By my standards, I am unlovable. I am the wicked. I am the awful. But by God's standards, by Christ's standards, he has rescued me, he has cleansed me, he has given me new garments and called me his son. And when I repent and I stand back up and I say, okay, God, and I, I dust myself off and I dry my tears, he calls me a man. In a lot of cases, he calls, he calls me a man of him. A man of God, a minister. And he calls that to everyone who believes in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ. For we are ministers of Christ. And Peter later later on says that. He says we have a priestlyhood. For though I was once in grave in hell. But now I am alive for eternal Christ. And this new mindset of perfection, this new mindset of glory, is now teaching me to rest in God. Is now teaching me how to have joy in God. Is now teaching me what joy is. Where before I was a despiser, before I was, I was angry, I was livid, I was mad, I was upset with those things around me because I didn't know what I was doing. My ignorance was more vast than my love. But now in Christ, my love is more vast than my ignorance. And my fear is cast out because perfect love casts out all fear. And now I'm able to walk with a circumspectly heart. I'm now able to walk with a constrite spirit and a, and a constrite mind. My mind is now concentrated on the word of God. And 
And every moment of my life, every moment of my day, I'm now praising God because I have a new life. I'm no longer what I once was, but I am a new creature. That's the truth. John 1 12, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even unto them who believe on his name, who were not born of blood, nor of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. For an instant, we beheld the glory of God. But now in my life, as I live my life, I am able to behold the glory of God every day. Because when you see me, you see the Father. When my mind is changed to the mind of Christ, to the Holy Spirit that dwells within me, I am living in the mind of Christ. While everyone else is afraid of death, I'm living a life that is eternal. For though I might die an instant, but internally, eternally, I live in Christ. For once my life was just a twinkle of an eye, a blink, a moment of instant. But then with Christ I shall know even as I am known, and it shall be eternally. For all things that were once impossible for me are all made possible through Christ Jesus. These aren't just sayings, this is the truth. God has given me new life. God has given me resurrection. He is my redeemer. He is my reconciler. And when I know that he is my redeemer, when I know that he is my reconciler, and I, I search that out in his word, in his scriptures, I search that out in his heart, and I say to God, you are my redeemer, and I say to God that you are my reconciler, and I say to God, you are my salvation. I know what it means. Where before I had no idea what those words truly meant. But now in Christ Jesus, I know exactly what they mean. I am redeemed. I am reconciled to God. And I am saved from a world of damnation. I hope I just didn't repeat myself because I know I did that video three times and I know that a lot of these lines are in all three of those videos even though two of them got deleted. But maybe because I repeated myself it finally got through your head because the human race is a stubborn bunch. But it is a joyful thing for a believer to fall in the hands of a living God. I'm happy that my Redeemer liveth. I'm happy that I'm in the hands of God. Now, I watched the movie recently, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And you can tell they're afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. How could I be afraid of the doorway to my God? How can I be afraid of the path that I'm going to go down so I can stand before my master? I welcome it. I say, hey, let me die happy. For this world is just an instant. There's no way to add time to how long you're going to live. There's no way to cheat death. And in the movie Puss in Boots, they, they were all like, oh, well, he cheated death because he gave up fighting. No, I, I don't cheat death. I let my God defeat death for me. I'm like, God, I, I can't do it. Because I can't. So I'm not afraid of death. But the whole movie was, oh my goodness, he's, the wolf is going to come and eat Puss in Boots. I'm like, so what? 
My Savior saved me from death. My Savior defeated death, defeated Satan, beat the tar out of both of them, and took the keys of death and hell and went to heaven and, and declared himself God in front of God. He declared what he was before he is now. But more so, even though it's not more so, but it is more so. <laughs> for we beheld the glory of the glory of the only begotten for an instant, for a moment, that much. And it blew our minds, literally. <laughs> and in that joy, in that love, in that peace, in that rest, that shalom, it becomes our strength. Because now I hear God saying to me, I love you. I hear God saying to you, I'm proud of you. And so the enemy always saying to you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. God's always saying to me, I love you, I'm proud of you, I believe in you, I cherish you. I only have good thoughts for you. If you don't hear God's voice, if you're not hearing that salvation, then I ask that you pray with me. I repeat these words. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask, Lord Jesus, for your Holy Spirit, your Yahweh, to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I ask for your salvation. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray this to you, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, Yahweh. In your name, Lord Jesus, I ask this. Amen. If you said that prayer, you, you changed that mind. You did the 180. You accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you, you, you stood in eternity with Christ. And God says to you, I love you. God says to you, I cherish you. God says to you, I'm proud of you. <sighs> Yahweh, we thank you that you are the God of joy. You are the God of peace. You are the God of rest. You are the God of shalom. And that you're a happy-go-lucky God. You really do love us. You really do cherish us. And we ask Yahweh that anyone who's watching this video, anyone who's learning from me, be blessed and love them, cherish them as I know you are, Yahweh. Remind them in their spirit that you are the Holy Spirit of fire and of power and of love. Remind them that they sit in the palm of your hand. In your name, Lord Jesus, to you, Yahweh, I pray all this. Amen. Shalom.